I have just returned from a classified briefing that I cannot stop thinking about, and what I'm about to tell you may fundamentally alter your understanding of our place in this cosmos. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? NASA is quietly collecting data on anomalous observations worldwide, and your input matters more than you realize. For decades, I have studied the laws that govern reality itself, the equations that describe everything from subatomic particles to the fabric of space and time. I have spent my life contemplating the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence, always through the lens of theoretical physics, always with the cautious optimism of a scientist who understands how vast and empty the universe appears to be. But three weeks ago, something happened that has shaken me to my core, something that suggests we are not merely searching for alien life, we may have already been found. The object in question has a designation that most people have never heard of, 3i Atlas. To the casual observer, it was cataloged as an interstellar comet, a wanderer from beyond our solar system, tumbling through the cosmic void on a trajectory that would carry it past our sun and back out into the darkness. When it was first discovered, astronomers celebrated. Interstellar objects are rare. We've only confirmed a handful in all of human history. Oumuamua came first, that strange cigar-shaped visitor that defied easy explanation. Then came Borisov, more conventional, more comet-like, and then came 3i Atlas. At first, there was nothing extraordinary about it. The trajectory calculations were standard. The spectroscopic analysis showed the expected signatures of ice and rock. It was moving fast, as all interstellar objects must, propelled by gravitational interactions from star systems we cannot even name. Scientists around the world tracked it, measured it, cataloged its properties with the methodical precision that defines modern astronomy. And then, without warning, everything changed. I received the call at 2.47 in the morning. The voice on the other end belonged to a colleague at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, someone I have known for 30 years, someone whose judgment I trust implicitly. His voice was shaking. He told me that 3i Atlas had begun emitting signals, not random noise, not the natural electromagnetic emissions that all celestial bodies produce. Artificial signals, structured, repeating, intelligent. I did not believe him at first. First. You must understand, in physics, we are trained to be skeptical, to demand extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims. Pulsars were once thought to be alien beacons until we understood their true nature. Fast radio bursts mystified us until we traced them to magnetars. The universe is full of phenomena that mimic intelligence without possessing it. So I asked the questions any scientist would ask. Had they ruled out instrumental error? Had they confirmed the observations with independent telescopes? Had they considered natural explanations? The answer to all of these questions was yes. Multiple observatories had detected the same thing. Radio telescopes in Australia, optical arrays in Chile, space-based instruments operated by agencies that rarely agree on anything. All of them were seeing the same signals emanating from 3i Atlas. The patterns were undeniable. Binary sequences, mathematical constants, prime numbers arranged in ways that could not possibly be coincidental. And beneath it all, a carrier wave of such precise frequency that it could only be the product of advanced technology. I flew to California the next morning. By the time I arrived at the secure facility where the data was being analyzed, the room was filled with some of the brightest minds in astrophysics, signal processing, and xenolinguistics. The atmosphere was electric with a mixture of excitement and dread. We were witnessing first contact, not in the distant theoretical future we had always imagined, but now, today, in our lifetime. The signals were being decoded in real time. Teams of cryptographers and mathematicians worked around the clock, feeding the data into algorithms designed to search for meaning in chaos. And slowly, agonizingly, a message began to emerge. It was not a greeting. It was not an invitation. It was a warning. The message spoke of something the entities behind it called the Great Filter, a concept we had theorized about for years but had never fully understood. In our models of cosmic evolution, the Great Filter represents a barrier that prevents civilizations from reaching the stars. Some scientists believe the filter lies behind us, in the improbable leap from simple chemistry to living cells. Others fear it lies ahead, in technology so powerful they inevitably destroy their creators. Nuclear weapons, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology gone rogue, climate collapse, the possibilities are endless, and each one is terrifying. 
But according to the message from 3i Atlas, we have been thinking about this entirely wrong. The Great Filter is not a barrier. It is a quarantine. The message explained that the galaxy is not empty. It is teeming with life, with civilizations that have existed for millions of years, with technologies that would appear to us as magic. But these civilizations learned long ago that indiscriminate expansion leads to catastrophe. Young species, they claim, are dangerous, aggressive, unpredictable. They consume resources without restraint. They weaponize every discovery. They cannot be trusted with the knowledge and power that comes with galactic citizenship. And so the older civilizations established a system, a protocol. Species that reach a certain level of technological development are monitored. Their radio signals are detected. Their space probes are tracked. Their trajectory is assessed, and if they show signs of the characteristics that mark them as threats, if they possess nuclear weapons, if they demonstrate artificial intelligence without ethical frameworks, if they continue to destroy their own biosphere even as they develop the means to leave it, they are contained, not destroyed, contained. The message described this containment with a word that the translation algorithms struggled to render accurately, but the closest equivalent in English was shepherding. We are being shepherded, kept in our cosmic pen until we mature, until we outgrow our violent adolescence, until we demonstrate that we can be responsible stewards of the power we are accumulating. 3i Atlas, it turns out, is not a comet at all. It is a probe, a reconnaissance device sent to our solar system to assess our current state, to measure our technological signature, to determine whether humanity has progressed beyond the danger zone or remains mired in self-destructive behavior. The artificial signals we detected were not meant to be received by us. They were status reports transmitted back to whoever sent this object, informing them of what it had found. And what it found, apparently, has caused concern. I sat in that briefing room as the full implications washed over me. Every assumption I had made about our place in the universe was wrong. We are not alone, searching desperately for signs of intelligence among the stars. We are being watched, evaluated, judged, and the verdict, it seems, is not favorable. The scientists around me debated what to do with this information. Some argued for immediate disclosure, for sharing these findings with the world. Others insisted on secrecy, fearing mass panic, social collapse, the unraveling of every institution we have built. I understood both perspectives. How do you tell humanity that we are not the masters of our own fate, that our future depends on passing a test we did not know we were taking, administered by intelligences we cannot comprehend? But what haunted what me most was not the message itself, it was the question it raised about consciousness and free will. If we are being monitored, if our development is being guided or constrained by forces beyond our control, then what does that mean for human agency? Are our choices truly our own? When we make decisions about technology, about war, about how we treat our planet, are those decisions the product of genuine human consciousness, or are they influenced by subtle pressures we cannot detect? The message did not answer these questions. Perhaps it could not. Perhaps the beings who sent 3i Atlas do not think in terms of individual consciousness the way we do. I have spent my career studying the mathematics of higher dimensions, the possibility of parallel universes, the strange loops of quantum mechanics. But nothing prepared me for the existential vertigo of realizing that we might be living in a cosmic experiment subject to rules we never agreed to, judged by standards we do not understand. NASA has not made an official announcement. The data remains classified, accessible only to those with the highest security clearances. But whispers are beginning to spread through the scientific community. Astronomers who were not part of the initial analysis are starting to ask questions. Why has 3i Atlas deviated slightly from its predicted trajectory? Why are certain observatories being denied access to the latest data? Why are conferences being canceled and papers being delayed. The truth cannot be contained forever. In the age of the internet, in a world where information flows like water through every crack in the system, secrets have a half-life measured in weeks, not years. Someone will leak. Someone always leaks. And when they do, the world will have to confront what we have learned. I think about this constantly now. When I look up at the night sky, I no longer see the serene beauty of distant suns. I see a neighborhood populated and watched. I see eyes looking back at us, evaluating whether we deserve to join them or whether we must remain isolated until we can prove ourselves worthy. And I wonder, what would it take to pass this test? 
What would humanity have to become to satisfy these cosmic shepherds that we are ready for contact, ready to take our place among the galactic community? The message from 3i Atlas did not provide a rubric. It did not give us clear metrics or milestones. But reading between the lines, interpreting the implications of what was said and what was left unsaid, I believe I understand what they are looking for. They want to see cooperation instead of competition. They want to see long-term thinking instead of short-term exploitation. They want to see a species that has unified itself, that has transcended tribal loyalties and national boundaries, that has learned to make decisions based on the good of all rather than the advantage of a few. They want to see us solve the climate crisis, dismantle our weapons of mass destruction, create artificial intelligence that serves humanity rather than replacing it. They want to see wisdom, and that perhaps is the most terrifying part of all. Because when I look at our world today, at the conflicts that tear us apart, at the environmental destruction we continue to inflict, at the technologies we develop without considering their consequences, I am not sure we can pass this test. I am not sure we are capable of the transformation they are demanding. We are clever, yes, ingenious, creative, but wise? That remains an open question. An open. The signals from 3i Atlas have continued. Every few days, new transmissions are detected, each one slightly different, as if the probe is updating its assessment based on real-time observations. Some of the scientists monitoring these signals claim they can detect patterns that correlate with events on Earth. When there is a military conflict, the signal modulates in one way. When there is a breakthrough in renewable energy, it shifts in another direction. When artificial intelligence achieves a new milestone, the carrier frequency changes. It is as if 3i Atlas is not just observing us, but reacting to us, adjusting its report based on whether we are moving toward maturity or away from it. This raises another unsettling possibility. What if the quarantine is not passive? What if these cosmic shepherds have the ability to intervene, to nudge our development in certain directions, to prevent us from crossing lines they have decided we must not cross? There have always been moments in history that seem inexplicable, technologies that failed for no clear reason, leaders who changed their minds at critical junctures, disasters that were averted by the narrowest of margins. Were those coincidences or were they interventions? I do not know. I do not think we can know. The gap between our level of understanding and theirs is too vast. We are, in cosmic terms, children trying to comprehend the motivations of adults. We can see their actions but cannot fully grasp their reasoning. What I do know is this. We have been given a gift. Not the gift of easy answers or comforting reassurance, but the gift of awareness. We now know that our choices matter, not just for ourselves, but for our entire species' future among the stars. We know that we are being evaluated, and we know roughly what the criteria for evaluation are. That knowledge gives us agency. It gives us a target to aim for. The question is whether we will rise to meet this challenge or whether we will fail. Condemned to remain in our quarantine until we destroy ourselves or until we finally learn the lessons that every mature civilization must learn. I think about my grandchildren. I think about what kind of world they will inherit. Will they look up at the stars with wonder knowing that humanity has earned its place among the cosmic community? Or will they look up with longing knowing that we are prisoners on our own planet, watched but not welcomed, judged and found wanting? Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. As more data emerges from 3i Atlas, as the scientific community grapples with these revelations, we will share what we learn. But more importantly, we will explore what it means. What it means for physics. What it means for philosophy. What it means for you. I want you to think about something. If we are truly being judged by intelligences far more advanced than ourselves, if our survival depends on demonstrating wisdom and maturity, then what does that say about the way you live your life? About the choices you make? About whether you contribute to humanity's collective maturity or hold us back? These are not abstract questions anymore. They are urgent. They are personal. They are the most important questions we have ever had to answer. So I leave you with this. If you knew that every action you took was being observed, that the future of your species depended on whether we could collectively demonstrate wisdom, how would you live differently? What would you change? And more importantly, what will you change starting now? Comment below. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me whether you believe we can pass this test. 
Tell me what you see when you look at the night sky. Now that you know we are not alone. Now that you know we are being watched. Because this is no longer just about science. This is about who we are and who we choose to become. And the clock, I fear, is ticking.